Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and another experiment where we take a look at what would happen if big teams in Europe got back all of the players that they had sold over the last 5 to 10 sort of years. Today we're going to take a look at Valencia, one of the real former giants of Spanish football, I use the word former, because they did win the title under Rafa Benitez um, a couple of times at the start of the 2000s. Um, but since then, they've kind of declined. Finishing third is their highest, always sort of going up and down, 10th in 07-08, and then in the last couple of seasons, finishing in the bottom half of La Liga. So definitely not at the peak of their powers. And I'm hoping that with the players we're bringing back today, they might finally be able to break our duck of European competitions. They should at least get back into the Champions League. That's the uh, very minimum goal. But really, it'd be nice to see if they can compete either in the Europa League or the Champions League. Um, so let's have a look at the players that uh, Valencia have sold over the last few years. And there are quite a few of them varying in ability. I've brought some back just because they might strengthen uh, the Valencia squad in a challenge for the title. Matthew and Ryan, one of those players, joined Brighton recently. But he's a good young goalkeeper, might be able to help them out. Um, left from uh, Valencia to Brighton for £5 million after they picked him up from Club Bruges for £5 million. Um, but he has bounced around quite a bit. Then you've got Abdenor, who's a decent centre-back, might add something to the team. He was on loan, I've cancelled the loan and brought him back into the team. They've got a lot of players who are quite good out on loan at the moment. So next season especially, uh, or the second season of this experiment, we might see a bit more. Shogdran Mustafi, I don't know how you pronounce his first name, is certainly one of the bigger players that they've had in recent years. He moved to Arsenal for £33.5 million, pounds, one half a very strong defensive partnership, the other half of that being Nicolas Otamendi, who's obviously now at Manchester City. He left for £32.5 million, pounds, so between those two defenders, racking up nearly £70 million, pounds, which is no small amount of money. Um, you've also got a couple of players who recently left for Barcelona. Andre Gomez is one of those, £28.5 million pounds for him after a couple of good seasons with Valencia. Uh, and Paco Alcacer, uh, who's now also at Barcelona, £24.5 million for him. A good young striker showing promising things at Barcelona. Uh, Jeremy Mathieu, another player who was at Barcelona, left Valencia for £16 million pounds to go there. Recently joined Sporting Lisbon on a free he is getting a little bit older, and with the central defenders we've already brought in, I'm not sure he'll be around for very long. Um, Juan Bernat, a good understudy at uh, Bayern Munich, plays about half the league games, left for just under £9 million, pounds, so a bit of a steal there, um, and now back at Valencia after being at Bayern for three Bundesliga winning seasons. Adol Rami, yet another uh, centre-back on the Valencia production line, joined them for £5 million pounds, but was sold to AC Milan for 3.4, bounced back to Spain and then on to France. Um, but he had a couple of good seasons, he was a really highly rated central defender for a while. Ava Benega, another very good midfielder that they've had. Spent a few years there after joining for 14 and a bit million pounds. Eventually left for Sevilla for 2 million. Went to Inter, they then brought him back for 8 million. So not a bad deal by Inter there, given they got him for free. Um, further down, you've got Jonas, who's absolutely tearing it up in the ripe old, at the ripe old age of 33 for Benfica. He's been prolific for them since leaving Valencia, where he was only getting about 10 league goals a season. He's now getting 20, 32 and 34 in the 15-16 season and still getting more since then. So a good uh, striker, even at the latter part of his career. Um, actually, very similar to Aritz Adariz, who is also having a bit of a renaissance at the moment. After leaving Valencia, not getting many goals, he moved to Athletic Bilbao for just 2 million and has been consi uh, consistently getting roughly a goal every two games for Bilbao, despite the fact that he's now, how old is he? 36 years old. Um, so certainly doing a very good job. You've also got Roberto Soldado who can play up front. He's over 30 now, but was a good player for a time. Uh, it was at Valencia who really made his name before moving on to Spurs in an ill-fated spell there uh, after £25 million transfer out. Six goals there and one more in the Premier League the season after. He really didn't do well um, and then moved to Villarreal back in Spain. Um, further down the list, you've got Jordi Alba, another player that went to Barcelona and certainly one of the better ones. He left for just 11 million. He's become uh, Barcelona's really key player at left back now. 
Um, and then you've got Bruno, another Brighton player. Uh, Bruno, 36 years old now, but he was at Valencia for a little while before moving to Brighton in the Championship. Uh, some were saying a quite a big step down there, but I think he was Brighton's, he might still be Brighton's captain uh, while they're in the Championship. And now we've brought him back to Valencia. Then you've got one of the really big names, Juan Mata, a former Valencia player who moved to Chelsea. And then on to Man United in big money moves. Obviously a key player for Man United now for Jose Mourinho, the manager who sold him from Chelsea. But you can see he's done very, very well throughout his career. It's a shame it doesn't show the assists because that's where he really shines. But picking up a lot of goals from midfield. Um, then there's David Villa, another of the 30-plus striking contingent. He moved uh, to Barcelona in a big transfer, got quite a few goals there, won quite a lot of competitions. Little spell at Atletico Madrid before going to Australia and then settling at the newly formed New York City FC, where he's absolutely banging in the goals in the MLS, as you would expect a striker of his quality to do. Um and then our final really big player is David Silva, along with Juan Mata, two stunning attacking midfielders. Also left in a big money move to England for Man City, uh, but played a lot of games there. One season he got 12 goals, which is quite the return, um, but did very well and is just so consistent as a little magician. And I think if you've got him and da Juan Mata in the same team, you're not doing too badly. And then finally, Raul Albiol. Albiol? I'm not sure. I think it's Albiol. Uh, he left for Real Madrid in a £13 million move back in 09-10. Uh, played inconsistently there before moving on to Napoli and becoming a real mainstay of their team. But a very, very good defender. Another centre-back. And really, that's where we've strengthened here. They've got a lot of over-30 strikers, a lot of very good central defenders, and a couple of good attacking midfielders. So it's what they add to the overall squad, which, of course, is very, very big now. If we sort them by value, which they are, you can see most of the high-value players have come into the team, but you've got players like Parejo, Kondogbi is out on loan, Guedes is there as well, um, and then you've got Nani, or cancelled his loan and brought him back to the team, Zaza, uh, Garay is reasonably good, Canseo is out on loan, but he's a very, very good defender. Um, and it's a decent team, certainly better than the one that they had, given most of their top 10 most valuable players have all just come back to the club. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't think they're ever going to win La Liga, but I think they've got a good chance of getting back into the Champions League and maybe even being successful in the Europa League. But we're going to go forward five years now, take each season one at a time, see where they finished in the league and see if they manage to achieve anything meaningful with all their best players back. Well, we are now five years in the future, and if we take a look at their first season with all these players back, what a start to the season it was. Absolutely on fire. Obviously, they don't have any European football, but totally tearing it up. David Veer on the score sheet, Adiriz is on there, uh, Al Sasser getting a couple as well. Pretty consecutive scorers. Al Sasser really doing a great job. Guedes in there, winning in the Spanish Cup, drawing with Barcelona at the Nou Camp. Obviously, they beat Real Madrid 2-1 as well. Al Sasser with both goals there. Um, continued that winning run absolutely spectacularly before finally losing to Celta Vigo 2-0. Um, but they continued to do really, really well, even drawing with Atletico Madrid. And it was an 82nd-minute Griezmann equaliser that kept them in that. But through in the Spanish Cup fifth round, um, then they got their second defeat, but still doing so well. Beat uh, Atletico Pamplona in the quarterfinal first leg and then drew with them in the second leg to go through. Um, and then in the semifinals, beat Sevilla 3-2. Two. two for Jonas, one for Zaza. And in the return leg, a 3-0 demolition of them. So could there be a Copa del Rey on the cards for them? Um, still doing so well in the league as well. Drawing with Real Madrid as well at the Bernabeu. Um, and then a couple of defeats here. Back-to-back, -back, Deportivo La Coruña, and then at home to Barcelona. Um, and then still doing really, really well in the league. And they actually beat Atletico Madrid in the Copa del Rey final. 2-1, Simone Zaza with the goal in the 74th minute, winning it for them. And really capping off an absolutely excellent season. The two defeats there right at the end of the season. Is that going to have a massive bearing on where they finish? We're going to have a quick look at the league table. And as you can see... It did affect them. Had they won those two games, they would have finished in second place. But Real Madrid ran away with the league title, 102 points. But Valencia there finishing a good 24 points clear 
of fifth place and securing Champions League football for the following season. And also just doing so, so well in terms of winning the Copa del Rey as well. So unlike uh, Dortmund, who only won the Super Cup in the last version of this experiment that we did, Valencia actually winning a really big competition there and doing well. Now the second season, were they able to keep this up? Looks a little bit more inconsistent. They lost the Super Cup final 2-1 at home and then drew 2-2 away, but it was too late. Cristiano Ronaldo, 110th minute goal in extra time, winning the competition for Real Madrid. And then starting off reasonably well in the league, they also beat PSG 1-0 in the Champions League. Uh, lost to Barcelona, drew with Atletico Madrid, and then lost to Inter away from home, which won't have helped them. But they did beat Liverpool, but that is a group of death if ever I've seen one. An 88th goal, uh, 88th minute goal for Montoya getting the points. But that means they've picked up six from nine in a group with PSG, Inter, Liverpool, and Valencia. That's a tough, tough group. Um, they did lose to Liverpool at Anfield, though. They beat PSG away from home as well. So home and away wins against PSG is not bad, taking them to nine points. But it's the Inter game, which they won. So they are definitely into the knockout stages of the Champions League. First time back in there. And doing reasonably well in the league, from what we can tell. Through in the Spanish Cup, fourth round. Um, lost to Deportivo La Coruña at home, 2-1 in the first leg there. Um, but in the return leg, 2-1. And I think they might have take it out on penalties from the look of that um, we'll see soon if they were in the sixth round they've lost 3-1 at home to Juventus a really tough draw in the first leg of the Champions League um, and in the return leg they did lose as well so back to back defeats there knocking them out of that competition they did beat Barcelona 2-0 in the league though which isn't bad going um, and as you can see they were knocked out of the Copa del Rey Cup on penalties and their league form not looking exactly like it was title winning form but if we drop back and have a look at the league the following year you can see they finished fourth yet again uh, still a good 23 points clear of fifth place so a top four and then the rest in La Liga now three points off Atletico Madrid they are keeping pace just about with the top teams but still a good 13 points off the title. They need to try and close that gap down. It only gets harder each year because most of those players we brought back were over 30 and are getting older. Now, the following season, they're in the Champions League once more, but it doesn't look like it's going very well. They're drawn with Chelsea, Inter and Monaco. They lost 2-0 to Chelsea at home and then were beaten 1-0 away by Inter Milan. They did beat Atletico Madrid, uh, sorry, um, AS Monaco 2-1, despite having 10 men for the entirety of the game, pretty much. Al Sasser turning it around and getting them the win. Um, but they lost to Real Madrid at home, crushed 3-0 away against Monaco, lost to Chelsea, um, and drew with Inter. I don't even think they made it into the Europa League from the looks of that. But they're still in the uh, Copa del Rey. They beat Atletico Madrid 3-1 at home as well. Uh, into the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey. Lost to Real Madrid, just 2-1 though, away from home. Not too bad. If they get a win at home, they could go through. And they actually did win 3-2, but it wasn't enough. The away goals, I think, for Real Madrid taking them through, um, despite only having 10 men, they actually came from 2-0 down to 3-2, but it was too little, too late, and they're out of the Copa del Rey. No other cup competitions in there, but their league form, not the best. If we go back and have a look at where they finished, again, fourth place is the position they finish in. They are the Spanish Arsenal at this point. And their huge points that they had over fifth place in the past, now cut down by Real Sociedad to just 10 points. They're moving away from the teams below them. Um, but not encouraging. Their points totals are definitely going down. They're only 10 points off the title this season, though. And given they lost nine games, had four of those been wins, they would have won the title. So maybe we shouldn't look too much into that. But if we go to the following season, boy, is that dreadful. Absolutely horrendous, including in the Champions League, where they lost all three of their opening games, all four of them, including back-to-back -back defeats to Shakhtar Donetsk. They only actually won three games all the way to the end of November. Um, they lost all six games in the Champions League, so definitely crashing out of that and Europe altogether. They were still in the Spanish Cup, managed to get past Malaga in that, and in the quarterfinals, crushed 3-0 by Ibar away from home, knocking them out of that one as well. They recovered in the second half of the season, probably a change of management, but I don't think that's really going to polish the turd enough. And as you can see, 
They did finish down in seventh place, absolutely plummeting. I think still qualifying for the Europa League, but they really, really fell away there, finishing 37 points off Real Madrid at the top of the league. Um, and all of those good players they had clearly have been left by now. The following year, though, finally a chance to have a go at the Europa League. They got past Strum Graz pretty comfortably, managed to be odd. Um, where on earth are odd from? Because that's a fantastic name for a team. It won't even let me click on it. Um, Daniel Eichval plays for Odd, and Odd are from Norway. So <laughs> there you go, new team that you can learn about. Um, and then they managed to qualify for the group stage. They beat Zurinsk, I'm not sure. Uh, drew with Karabag, drew with Roma, which isn't a bad result. Uh, drew with Roma again, did beat Zurinsky again, and then finally beat Karabag, definitely taking them through, I would imagine. Parejo had a testimonial in the middle of December on Boxing Day, which is a bit unusual. You can see their league form really not that great. A lot of draws here. But still in the Spanish Cup, managed to go through to the quarterfinals. Uh, drew with Real Sociedad before beating them at home to put themselves into the semi-finals, where they beat Malaga 2-1 and then lost 2-1 um, at home, knocking them out on penalties. Uh, they beat Fiorentina, though, 2-1 in the first knockout stage match and then drew 2-2 away, taking them into the last 16. Um, and then they drew with Galatasaray away and at home managed to get the win, taking them to the quarterfinals. A 90th minute winning goal from Simone Zaza, who's done so well for them throughout this entire experiment. And then in the quarterfinals, lost 1-0 at home to Liverpool. Um, Liverpool, of course beat them in when they were met up in the Champions League and I think they're probably going to do the same here and in the Anfield match they lost 2-1 going out at the quarterfinals Liverpool into the semis and it looks like their league form was equally as bad as previous seasons and ultimately they again finished in seventh place just about qualifying for the Europa League but only one point ahead of Celtavigo and Athletic Bilbao um, and a long way off the title as well a good I mean, nearly 40 points off the title um, so nowhere near that if we have a look at their transfers though and see if there's a reason for why they struggled so much we can go back to the original season you can see all the players they brought in there wasn't going to be anybody else there but they made 100 million pounds in player sales in their first season alone Juan Bernat going for 36 million Mata going for 27 and a half uh, Gaia going who's a very good young player um, I mean, they just let two of their best players go, or three really, if you include Gaia, four maybe even with Garay, but he tends to go to China in the February kind of area. But if you think back to how good a start to the season they had until January in their first year, and then they let Bernat, Mata, Garay and Gaia all go, and they started to struggle after that, and it's not a big surprise as to why. The following year, £35 million pounds brought in Canseo, their other brilliant young player, left for Inter. Paulista goes as well, and he's a decent centre-back. They managed to hold on to just about everybody else, though. And the following year, they did actually sign somebody for £11.5 million, but they still let other players leave. The following year, um, no real money spent. At no point in this have they spent more than £11 million. Pounds. That's all they spent on players. Um, £4 million pounds worth of players leaving. I know... They've done well. They've hung on to most of their players from what I can tell. Obviously, a few of them will have retired. But if we have a quick look at their senior squad and sort it by value, they've still got Al Sasser, They've still got Mustafi. Zaza is still there. And he's had a brilliant time. If we have a quick look at his career stats, you can see he's been getting goals aplenty in the league when Juan Mata um, and David Silva were there. 30, 27, 10, and 19. Um, they've also got Lajic in there for 14 million. Um, Andre Gomez still there as well Jordi Alba's there Otamendi's still there they've got Manuel Neuer in the team um, and Angel, Angel Di Maria so they signed Neuer on a free which is why I didn't notice him earlier and then Angel Di Maria we got him in for a free as well so that's a very good couple of players to sign on free transfers but they managed to hold the core of their team together pretty well I'm not sure how long they'll keep them if they keep finishing seventh though but that is going to be it for this experiment again none of these teams that we're giving all these players to are managing to crack Europe um, and the best Valencia did was win one Copa del Rey so 
can you please name a team that you think if they got all their players back they could win a European competition because I cannot find one at the moment and I'm not sure how many more of these I'm going to do. Do let me know down in the comments though if you're still enjoying these and the teams you want to do. Do drop a like on the video as well. It lets me know you're enjoying the experiments and that I should do more of these kind of things. Uh, you can also subscribe for the next one of these in a couple of days time. Uh, and there's also my links to Twitter and Patreon down below if you'd like to support the channel. But until next time, see ya.